Well, first off, uh, I want to welcome you here. Uh, as we were talking beforehand, I, I remember first meeting you when this was a plan that you were trying to get everyone around in cement. It's got to feel really, really good with the milestone you just achieved. Yeah, it's fun, Chris. I, I'll admit that I do drive the right of way and I look down the improvements and I sometimes pinch myself to really believe that it's actually happened. Did we really do this? We did it. Yeah. 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 We're not quite done, but we have uh, opened up a big section of the railroad between Michigan City and Dune Park and to see that right away and to watch the trains go through and the infrastructure we've built, it's incredible. Tell me what it uh, what you envisioned ages ago now and how that compares how that's expanded and grown even since that started yeah you know first of all you got to go back before i got here this this has been in the works for a long long time i think pete had an interest pete in Pisklowski, <laughs> absolutely the nick d board for years wanted to improve commuter service here in northwest indiana a lot of folks had 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 the idea that this could be a really good investment for Northwest Indiana. But for a long time, we were um, disjointed with our approach to trying to get things going here. Um, and that's kind of when I came in in 2014, the sort of the mindset was, we'll never get anything done down in, in Indianapolis because everybody goes down with different ideas and nobody can coalesce around one big idea. That's not the case today. Yeah. Uh, we, we To get... $1.5 billion with the railroad infrastructure planned, engineered, bid out, and almost finished in construction in Northwest Indiana is remarkable. And it's just the start. There's so many other opportunities. This region is coming together. They see the vision. They see what we have as an asset that is remarkable. People are just starting to realize how, how incredible we're positioned in the country. This is massive amount of infrastructure being in, infused into this rail line. To give you a sense, the annual capital program for the South Shore Line when I got here was $20 million a year. That's what we put into new rail, new platforms, new stations, whatever. Our five-year capital plan right now is $2 billion. That is an incredible, just to even say, $2 billion when we were doing a $20 million annual program. It's incredible investment into, into this asset and we'll leverage it in all kinds of ways going forward. What Help people understand when you talk about that massive investment in the railroad, it's not just a massive investment in the railroad. It's a gigantic investment in Northwest Indiana. Yeah. You know, I think for years we in this region lagged behind the vision of what you could do with um, a commuter rail asset like ours, how we can, when we, when we reduce the time to and from Chicago, improve the frequency, improve the service, what that unlocked, what the potential was. People would say, well, what's, why are you making this investment? Why, it, it, for a hundred years, nothing's happened. Well, yeah. the, the reason was you can't just close your eyes and wish it to happen. Yeah. You actually, as a community, have to plan for it. You have to look at your zoning. You have to go out and let the world know that you're receptive to this kind of development and, and go out and pitch your community and why it's so wonderful, why the quality of place, the, the, the lake shore, the low tax base, go out and sell Northwest Indiana. And I think the communities up and down our, our, yeah. our rail line and, and around the rail line have started to do an incredible job of marketing what we have here in Northwest Indiana. I think that's the game changer. It's yeah. really, it's really the, the, re, the understanding what the asset we have is and then marketing it. What's gotten put down? Like, sure. tell me a little bit about miles of rail. Sure. Tell me about, you know, infrastructure, so extensions. The double track project's over a 26 mile corridor between Michigan City and Gary. Okay. We've broken into two phases. The first phase was Michigan City to Dune Park. Second phase, Dune Park to Gary. The phase one, which is Michigan City, Dune Park, done, open. We got a brand new, two high level platforms in Michigan City. It's gorgeous. We got a new platform in Beverly Shores. We built a new low level platform in at Dune Park. And we have double tracked the entire way with high speed crossovers so we can go back and forth and not play follow the leader and move around mm -hmm. and have local and express trains on the same on the same line yeah. at the same time. But, All the stuff that I grew up with is now coming out here. Yeah, I love it. Exactly. And now the second phase of that, it from Dune Park to Gary, 
we're 91% or 92% complete with the overall project construction. Probably in the next few months, three or four months, we'll be 100% done. With that segment of the railroad, we'll test it, we'll start to, to put it into, into, into place, and then May of next year, we'll flip the switch and we'll have a brand new railroad with reduced time to market, 14 new trains, we'll have better service to and from Chicago, reduced time, and better on time performance substantially better on time performance so um, it's it it's almost completely done tell me a little bit about the group that got at this table yeah to yeah. make that it, happen it, it, it really was a, a grassroots effort I remember when we had Secretary of Transportation Lane Chow come out and we did a presentation out at South Bend Airport with Senator Young she saw right away that this was not a state-run program. This is one, not one entity running a program. We have money from St. Joseph County and, Mich and, and South Bend. They, they, they funded the or the St. Joe fu function for a portion of the project. LaPorte County threw in money and so did Michigan City. In um, Porter County and in Lake County, the Regional Development Authority jumped in and put money into the project. Then we have state money and then we have federal money. It's just such an incredible mix of funds and support. That means if these folks are putting in from these different political bodies, they're spending hard-earned tax dollars and investing those dollars from so many different areas. That means that vision, people from one end of the line to the other see the benefit. The concept was we do this investment, the state puts in this money, and then the state gets a return on investment. It's yeah. a big ROI. So the folks in Evansville are like, okay, we're going to put money into this. We're going to invest in Northwest Indiana. And then it's going to come back into the state treasury for other things that we might want to do in Evansville or Fort Wayne or Carmel who, or whatever. That buy-in is not easy to get because yeah. there's projects that they all want to do. So we had this broad-based local mayors, council folks. So Michigan City, we got an agreement to run right down the middle of the street in, in Michigan City. And for the last couple of years, it's been a fair amount of disruption. I mean, our motto is pardon our dust. Yeah. We closed 20 grade crossings. There were 33 grade crossings in Michigan City. 20 of them got closed. There's still 13 of them that are opened up in a two-mile area, but that's change. Yeah. Change is not always easy. I think now people have seen what a benefit it's going to be. We've enhanced safety. It's going to be a quiet zone in Michigan City, so we won't be on the horn from Carroll Avenue all the way to Sheridan uh, for 32 blocks with the and engineer just sounding the horn at all times of day and night. Um, so we've increased safety. We are going to increase the the improve the quality of life by reducing the horn volume, and then the the train asset is going to be huge. Yeah. So you know. let me also mention. You know, for the South Shore employees, it's a it's a it's a remarkable time. There, the, the railroad that, that our employees are are working at today is not the railroad they're going to be working for tomorrow. It's going to be vastly changed over the last couple of years. You're it's, giving them much better tools to do their job. Absolutely, they've really leaned in hard over the last couple of years. It's been it's not been easy to operate yep. double the, on the South Shore line. We're busing. We're taking trains from South Bend to Michigan City. They get off on a bus. They ride the bus over a 26-mile quarter. They get off the bus. They get on a train, lather, rinse, repeat. That kind of coordinated effort is not easy. So hats off to our employees. Hats off to our, our team. Uh, you've got Mike Rowe, who's the project manager on, on Westlake. He's doing a great job. And you got Nicole Barker, who's doing, who's the project manager on the Double Track Project. These these folks and their teams have really leaned in and make sure that, that we're managing these projects well, that we're staying on budget, that we're staying on on time and those things are happening which is another really remarkable um story here because you got cost inflation going through the roof and you guys are going to stay on budget and we're going to stay and we're not be we're not being changed ordered to death we're managing this project again between these two projects 1.6 billion dollars of construction uh, projects of enormous size when we were we were used to managing 20 million dollars yeah so you know think about the the scope change that's that's led and that our employees are, are leading and so proud of them so they're they're doing great everyone's excited about seeing the infrastructure in the ground go to miller yeah. the, the 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 change in the in the view shed at miller by on us 20 and lake street is it's remarkable where where was once um, a sort of a dilapidated old parking lot, and we had that little station there. Now you've it, you've got a a beautiful footprint, beautiful campus, great new station there. Uh, we have changed the interchange between US 12 and US 20, yep. just a little farther to the east there, which is a great addition that allowed us to pull the South Shore down 
to the south and give us 850 feet of tangent platform so we could build the high-level platforms in Miller. It, it all came together. INDOT was part of that. Tell me about the future. Tell me about what's going to be happening in the next couple of years. Yeah. So in addition to the fact that we'll open up Double Track in May of this year, or May of 24, and then Westlake will finish up May of 25. But those are just that's just the start. Um, Westlake... It is envisioned, and the plan would be for us to go from the end of the line, current end of the line, which will be Munster Dyer border, to Lowell, St. John, and Cedar Lake. So, so we've just built phase one of, of Westlake. Phase two will come. We have talked for years about the opportunity to go to Valparaiso. That still exists. So that's something as we grow as a region may become more viable, especially with technology changing, with um, battery electric, with the opportunity may perhaps to have a battery locomotive or power system so that maybe we just use a battery locomotive to get between Clark Road, which is right off of one of the rail spurs to Valparaiso, and then that train gets under the pow under power uh, at Clark Road and goes into Chicago. So the technology is improving and vastly o opening up opportunities. Over in South Bend right now, we're embarked on a plan to get from the east side of the airport to the west side of the airport, which will not only shave 15 minutes off of each trip to and from Chicago from South Bend, but it also opens up the opportunity for us to run a shuttle train from 11th Street, Michigan City to the airport in less than a half an hour. People can jump on a train in Hammond, take, take that train to Michigan City, get off, cross the platform, get on the airport shuttle and go right to South Bend Airport. Yeah. How convenient is that? There's a danger in recognizing people is you'll, you'll miss yeah, you'll people. Miss them, yeah. But you know, I'm gonna start off in South Bend area. You, we had University of Notre Dame. We had them squarely behind us. We had then Mayor Pete, who was a huge advocate. So we, you know, so South Bend Coalist, even though not a dollar of the construction is occurring out in that area for these two projects, they saw the fact that everything to the west of them is improved, their whole service gets improved. And you go farther to the west, Michigan City got 100% behind this project. You can't talk about, not talk about Heather Ennis, yeah. our latest um, Sagamore of the Wabash Award winner. Good for her. Uh, folks like Heather, Don Babcock, you know, um, my partner uh, in crime, Bill Hanna, who uh, at times both of us early, in the early days, um, you know, wondered if it would ever happen. But, you know, uh, it's happened. You know, now we're working with Sherry Ziller at the RDA and they've got a complete runway now to go out and and it's not, a, it's not an idea anymore. It's in the ground. So yeah. as, as they're selling the region and coming up with plans, working with communities, it's happening. The, our delegation in both uh, Congress has been wonderful. Senator Young's been, been great. We had sent, uh, Congressman Wolarski, who was wonderful. Certainly, Visklaski is a champion of this. But you can't not talk about uh, our governor. Uh, yeah. You know, Holcomb has been incredibly supportive and made Westlake and Double Track part of his, his vision when he first ran for his first term. And he stuck with it every step relentlessly. of the way, yeah. just relentlessly. It never waver. So when people say, how'd you get it done? I say, you have to have champions. You yeah. have to have people who are willing to take a risk, who are willing to put themselves out, who are willing to go into the communities and get support um, at all levels and bring that to the table and take a risk. Yeah. Because uh, there's no guarantee that none of this is ever guaranteed. It's just a good idea with a lot of good reason behind it. But it looks like it's going to pan out.